Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the types of uncertainty that you'll be expected to use in the Advanced Higher Physics course, which are the scale reading uncertainty, the mean and random uncertainty, systematic uncertainty, and calibration uncertainty. So let's get started. Now, the first thing to remind you of is that when you're doing experiments, all measurements will be subject to uncertainty. So this means that no measurement that you take can be 100% accurate. And we're going to look at the four types of uncertainty which cause that. Remember the term error can also be used instead of the word uncertainty, but they mean the same thing. Moving on to the first type of uncertainty then, remember the scale reading uncertainty tells us how accurately a scale on a measuring instrument can be read. The reading uncertainty depends on the type of scale used, however, whether it's analog or digital. So remember we use two different rules for whether it's analog or digital. So an analog scale usually involves division markings or a dial, for example, a ruler, a meter stick, or a weighing scale. And the uncertainty in this case is given by the following result in the box. So the fact that it's in a box means it's important. So the reading uncertainty for an analog scale is equal to plus or minus half of the smallest scale division. So for example, if I was to look at this ammeter this milliameter here, you'll see that I've got 10 little division markings between 0 and 10, which means that each little division marking is 1 milliamp. Okay, and that means that my reading uncertainty in here would be plus or minus half of that 1 milliamp, which would give me an answer of plus or minus 0 0.5 milliamps for my scale reading uncertainty. A digital scale, on the other hand, usually involves a small computer screen, for example, a calculator or a multimeter. The uncertainty in this case is given by this result in the box, which says that the reading uncertainty for a digital scale is equal to plus or minus one of the least significant digit. As an example, if we look at this voltmeter here, you'll see that there is a reading of 0.17 volts on the screen. Now, the least significant digit would be this one over here. The actual number seven doesn't matter. It's just the least value that that could have, which is a one. And so the least significant digit in this case would be the 0 0.01. So my reading uncertainty for the digital scale would be plus or minus 0 0.01 volts. Moving on to the next type of uncertainty, we have mean and random uncertainty. So by this stage in your physics career, you'll be used to repeating measurements many times in order to obtain a mean or an average. Now, remember that we say that the mean of a set of repeated measurements is the best estimate of the true value of the quantity being measured. So you're never going to quite get the measurement that you're looking for 100% accurate, but the best estimate you could get of that is if you take the mean of it. Now, it's normal for measurements taken to form a spread around the mean value as shown in this picture here. So if you were to take, say, 100 measurements of something, then they would form a bell curve that looks a bit like this. Okay, and your mean value would appear in the middle. So that would be your best estimate of the true value if you take the mean down the middle. Now remember to find the mean of something, all we do is we add up all the measurements and we divide by how many measurements there are. And we'll now have a look at random uncertainty. Remember that when measurements are repeated, slight variations or random fluctuations in the readings will occur. So if you were to take many measurements of something, chances are you're never gonna get quite the same result every time. And this leads to random uncertainties. And just a reminder that the more a measurement is repeated, the smaller the random uncertainty becomes. And that's why it's important for you to repeat your measurements many times. Now, the random uncertainty is given by this relationship here, where you've got random uncertainty is equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by the number of measurements. So if you've got a list of measurements, you take the biggest number, subtract the smallest number, and divide by how many measurements you have in total. Now, remember that a common question in the higher course was that you could be asked to find a mean value of a set of readings, and then asked to calculate the random uncertainty in that mean. And you might be expected to do something similar at advanced higher level. So moving on to look at systematic uncertainty now. Remember, this is a recap from higher as well. So systematic uncertainties occur when all measurements are affected in the same way. For example, the readings are all too high or all too low. This could be due to a faulty measuring instrument, the poor design of an experiment, failure to zero a measuring instrument before taking readings, or the experimenter making the same mistake each time when taking a reading. So as an example, if you were to take a meter stick and make some measurements with your meter stick, let's say the meter stick was cut off at the end by several micrometers or several millimeters and you didn't know about it, then all of your measurements that you take with that meter stick will be offset by a small amount. And looking at another example, if we were to carry out an experiment on Ohm's law and plot some values of voltage against current on a graph, we would expect to get a straight line through the origin. However, if you had voltage readings that were all too high because of a faulty voltmeter, for example, then your line would not be straight through the origin and in fact would be offset from the origin by a certain amount. So the line would appear up here. 
Or for example, let's say your current values were all too high, then instead of the line over here, the line would be over this side instead. And lastly, remember that when systematic uncertainties are present, the mean value of a set of readings will be offset. Now the final uncertainty, which you won't have seen before in the higher course, is called the calibration uncertainty. Now calibration uncertainties arise when there is a difference between a manufacturer's claim for the accuracy of an instrument when compared with an approved standard. So for example, a manufacturer of a voltmeter might state that it will measure to an accuracy of plus or minus 0.05 volts. And this is sort of a way for the manufacturer to cover their own back because they know that their instrument is never gonna be 100% accurate. And when instruments have not been calibrated correctly, this can lead to systematic uncertainties. So calibration uncertainties and systematic uncertainties are actually related. Examples of calibration uncertainties might include a meter ruler that is not exactly one meter in length, a balance scale that under or over reads mass, an analog ammeter that has not had the zero correctly set, which will consistently read incorrectly, or a timer that runs slowly. And the next thing to mention is that although it's true that you will occasionally see calibration uncertainties in your results, it's much more likely that other factors will have a greater effect in your results. So things like the scale reading uncertainty, the systematic uncertainty, or the random uncertainty, these will usually have a much bigger effect on your final results. And just to leave you with a top tip, if you're doing your project and you're evaluating your experimental procedures or your methods, try not to fall into the trap of simply stating that the experiment could have been improved by using better equipment. If you're talking about the equipment, you need to be specific. You need to talk about what could be done better, what equipment you could have used and so on. That's it from this video, guys. I hope you found value in it. If you did, give it one of these and make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.